Hello, and welcome to our webinar on capturing reliable data in the field. My name is Scott Ward, and I am on the national government team here at Esri. Your presenters today are my colleagues, Sharmel Menzel and Thomas Warner of the National Government Geospatial Center. First, a little housekeeping. While you will be muted throughout the presentation, you may enter questions at any time through the questions box on your right, and our colleague Andrew King will provide answers during the Q&A section at the end of the webinar. There will also be survey questions when you exit, and we ask you to please take a moment to complete the questions so we may continue to improve the quality of our webinars. This webinar is being recorded, and a link will be provided in a follow-up email. To kick things off, we have a short poll to gauge your experience with Collector for ArcGIS. Please select one. So we have a nice balance, it seems, uh, with most of you being between just starting and intermediate, which is good news for us. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. And this um, this is Sharmel Menzel, and it thanks everybody for filling out the poll. That gives Thomas and I an idea of your experience with Collector, and we'll keep that in mind as we're going through this presentation. Before uh, we dive into ArcGIS Collector, I want to step back and talk about how ArcGIS, if you're utilizing ArcGIS Online, or ArcGIS Enterprise is that central component to, that pulls together all the different apps that are available to help you accomplish your field operations. And if you're working in the field, you understand that these phases that I'm talking about. Let's look at them for just for a minute. When you are in your home office, the command center, you need to plan and coordinate with the field. So we have ArcGIS workforce apps or an ArcGIS dashboard to help you monitor what is occurring in the field. When you are in the field, you might need assistance on a specific project to navigate to the locations where you need to collect information on your assets. ArcGIS Navigator is available for that. And then there is capturing the information, the most critical point in my view, and that's where RTS Collector is available as well as two other different applications for capturing data. Now, all of these applications can be integrated and linked for your workflow. Each of these applications are beneficial in and of themselves, such as RTS Collector, which is our premier mobile data collection app. You might be wondering why I'm saying ArcGIS Collector and not Collector for ArcGIS. Well, officially later this month, it's going to change names to ArcGIS Collector. So I'm just a little bit ahead of the game. By use, utilizing Collector, you're going to modernize your field workflow and improve your accuracy while being able to capture that data anywhere, anytime, disconnected or connected. And you can utilize your mobile device that you prefer, Microsoft, Apple or an Android, such as with Google Play, and downloading the free um, download application. Now, agencies such as the City of Burnaby, Canada, Canada, sorry, Canada, Canadians, Canada, are creating uh, new field operations during our COVID-19 pandemic. If you're not sure where Burnaby is, that's why I've added the map. It's 15 minutes southeast of Vancouver. I hear it's a beautiful town that has over 160 parks and trails. They added all of these new social distancing signs and signs to tell people to go one way down the trails and paths while we are um, during the lockdown. But they wanted to know where those signs were. So the staff, two staff collected with ArcGIS Collector the locations and they collected them at a 20 to 55 centimeter accuracy, which is impressive because they have a tree canopy, which is very dense tree canopy. And that's why they connected Collector to a GNSS receiver 
to their iPad while they're collecting these social distancing signs. Well, now that they have the locations, once those pandemic guidelines are relaxed, they will be able to send staff out quickly to the field, take down the signs, or change the signs appropriately. Thomas and I decided today to highlight some of the capabilities, new and others that we feel that need to be described in further detail, such as offline workflows. It's so important to the national government agencies that Thomas and I support. Improved editing capabilities, editing multiple features, being able to snap to existing features. In fact, that's the number one, or used to be the number one request in ArcGIS ideas. To integrate and, and support your operations, you can pair Collector with other ArcGIS apps, such as ArcGIS Workforce. We will cover how to capture those accurate attributes as well as location data in the field. Being able to create arcade expressions to help enhance your symbology while you're in the field to help populate fields, as well as our, the favorite topic of what's next, what's coming. Now today, Thomas and I decided to focus on ArcGIS Enterprise while we are doing our demonstrations with Collector. In fact, we're doing everything in ArcGIS Enterprise 10.8. 10.8.1 is coming out the next quarter. When I mentioned snapping, I mentioned ArcGIS Ideas. And I wanted just to take a second to look at ArcGIS Ideas. Not everybody is familiar with this. It's part of the ESRI community we call GeoNet. And underneath this community is a capability to go to the tab ArcGIS Ideas. I've captured the collector page. And product team looks at this page, this information every week. They look at suggestions and ideas and how they've been voted upon by other collaborators in this community. The, the, the product team indicates that they've been reviewing them, they're under consideration, and a lot of them are included in the product plans. So. I encourage you to look here for if you have a suggestion or idea for an enhancement and participate in the crowdsourcing, voting the topic up. Now let's prepare to go offline. As some of you are new to um, ArcGIS Collector, I wanted to cover the configuration capabilities. The most of the capabilities in Collector are, are, are um, configured within the feature layer properties and web app properties, basically a combination of the both. So let's look at those individually. Within the feature layer properties, you're setting those editing permissions, indicating which features staff can add, update, delete. For instance, if you have a fixed asset such as a building, you probably don't want your staff to move the location of the building. They probably will be only able to update the attributes. You decide if your procedures necessitate the need to track those who um, can edit or who have been editing your features and when. And don't forget about the symbology when you are looking for field work applications. I worked with NOAA. They were taking a collector out into boats and realized that the symbology was so important with that glare that you have on the screen. So it's good to test this in the environment that the that collector is going to be used. As far as web map properties, all web maps that are used in Collector, no matter if you're online or offline, need an editable layer, a base map, and shared to a group. When you're using ArcGIS Enterprise and have an enterprise identity provider connected, you can link your enterprise groups from your IDP to your ArcGIS Enterprise group where you shared your web map. It makes it much easier to add staff for field work. There are additional requirements if you're going offline, such as features need to be sync enabled. And this is not a requirement to version, but I just wanted to put a note out that if you are utilizing ArcGIS Enterprise and have an edible feature service that's registered as versioned, a new version, which we call a child version, is created. And that's where the edits occur. The reason I mention this is because 
you'll have an extra step of reconciling and posting your edits, but it's, it's feasible and a common workflow. And of course, we will enable uh, and identify the web map as being able to take offline. There's a couple offline workflows. We've always been able to create a web map, let the field worker go onto their mobile device and download the area that they need and at the scale that they desire. It's very server heavy processing. I recommend you looking at the predefined workflow where well, you still author the map, but you define some map areas for offline use. The field worker decides which area they need to use. And what's the saving here is that the server processing saving. And you really need to think about that when you're working in a field environment. Another consideration is your base maps for, our, um, for offline work. And within ArcGIS Enterprise, you have a couple of options. You can build your own base map. You have your points, lines, and polygons, imagery files. They can be included in your base map to take offline. The ArcGIS data appliance is an option. This is a ability to store behind your firewall a ready to use terabytes of global base maps and reference layers. So it's basically a plug and play and you can get going with your applications to work offline. And then there's a third option to use ArcGIS online base maps. And you're like, wait a minute, you're talking ArcGIS Enterprise. Well, many people have a hybrid approach for the ArcGIS platform. They have ArcGIS Enterprise and they have ArcGIS Online. And for that reason, wow. I just wanted, wanted to uh, describe and go a little bit further into how do you do this. For our demonstrations, demonstration time. So we are at Lake Akatink in North Virginia outside of DC and nobody's in these pictures because it was taken during the COVID <laughs> lockdown. Uh, but there are facilities, there's uh, ability to have paddle boats, uh, once the park opens back up. Actually, it's now opened. Let's look at creating that, or enabling the ArcGIS Online base map in our enterprise for offline. To do so, you go to ArcGIS Online, and there's several groups, tiled base maps. I need a tiled base map or a vector tile base map. And within this group, they're the base maps that we're very familiar with. If you have ArcGIS Online, imagery, grayscale, dark grayscale, I'm going to use World Topo. I like that one, especially if I'm outdoors in the park. And I'm going to go to the items detail. This is a specific item for, for export and it for offline use. How do I make this enabled in my enterprise? Simply by going down to the bottom right hand, copy in my URL, moving over to my enterprise. Now I'm logged into my enterprise and I'm going to add a new item by pasting that URL, you've probably have added in, um, items before, and it says that a secure service has been detected. So I need to have an RTS Online account, an organization account, to be able to access this for offline use. Determine if you want to store the credentials. I do, and I'm titling it today because I have a, several of these examples in here. And it's going to be added into my ArcGIS Enterprise. Now it's time for me to add it as a base map. So let's go to a fresh base map. Underneath Add, I'm going to search for layers. It's the top option. Clicking on the title, I have the details. And my tip is to go to the bottom where it says Add to Map or Use as Base Map. And you select Use as Base Map. Now I'm ready to add in the features that I'm going to edit in the in the park or when I do my field work. I've already done so in a web map. Here are paths and the, the benches that I am in charge of maintaining within that park. Let's make sure that we can take this offline. So I'm going to look at the web map properties underneath more details. And let's look at the settings. I'm very happy to see that offline is available here in the tab right underneath the title. That means I've done a lot of things correct in my web map. I have a feature that can be uh, edited and I have a base map to be taken offline. So let's click that. I've already enabled offline mode <laughs> and I've created two map areas. 
But when I'm looking at these map areas, remember this is that, that workflow I'm recommending you look at. When I create those two map areas, I've created two, one that's too large for my um, workflow and one that is actually too small. So I'm going to hit that again, because my base maps is supposed to come up on there too. There we go. So I'm going to create a new area for my specific work. Southwest area of the park. The level of details. I'm going to go to a building and start the counties. I could decide when the packages, these map area packages are updated. And I can create a rectangular box, which is what we've been able to do in the past. But now you can create a regular polygon, which is fabulous. This means I don't have to pull down all that unnecessary data. And I have my area that I'm going to work in today. It's saved. And next time I go to my mobile app, I will see three different options for work areas to download. Now, this base map is useful. I can pull this base map down into my uh, phone when I pull the area. But what if I want to? expedite the usage of base maps. Thomas and I probably work in this region quite often. Why don't we just sideload the base map onto our phones? And that's a great way of expediting staff getting out to the field. So how do I do that? Go to the advanced options underneath offline. At the bottom, you can indicate the tile package or vector tile package that you want to utilize that's already on the device. And I've created that tile package in ArcGIS Pro. You can create it in, with Tile Package Creator or Python scripts. I've done this by um, adding that feature that's in Enterprise to ArcGIS Pro, utilizing the Download Map option up on the top right. And now I have my tile package that both Thomas and I are utilizing for this webinar. Well, how do I get that tile package onto uh, my device? There's many different ways of sideloading it. I used iTunes. Thomas used the um, iCloud option underneath the Files app, as this video shows. You can use peer-to-peer -peer using apps such as AirDrop, and that will help minimize that number of staff hitting the server. Any way you can improve and, and help expedite getting out to the field. Well, now we're ready for the field work. So let's look at some of those enhancements to the editing of the features in the field. At Lake Akatink, we are utilizing that tile package that's base map, as well as the features from my web map. I am going, uh, well, we look at the map identify the features. These are benches. And I have, on the benches, I have attached an image. I just paused it here for a second because I wanted to mention that iOS now has the ability to attach audio files, PDFs, Excel files, something to look at. And it will be coming to Android. As I, um, it's actually going to start the play again. As I look at those attachments, I see that 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 bench, and you'll see the picture again, It's they're pretty old. And luckily I have a few citizens that have donated benches. So we're going to edit multiple features first. I select edit multiple, and now I can select which items I want to edit, and these are gonna be the two features. I see the two features and select continue at the top, and now I get to edit the attributes of those features at the same time. Wow, saving a lot of time in the field. And improving accuracy, I've added pick list and also saves time in the field. Easily select the today button. Yes, these are donated benches. And who is the honoree? In this case, I'm going to sit value and I can ask the Molly. If you didn't see that, let's do that one more time. I'm going to select recent values, and the last three recent values appear. 
and they are available as you work in this map. If you close down the map, they're not. But that's going to save so much time and all the mistakes that I usually do when I'm typing on my phone. Time to sync. So I select the arrows at the top for syncing. And now you have the sync dialog in your map. And well, I'm offline, so of course I can't sync. But I'm afraid I'm going to forget to sync when I get back online. So I'm just going to turn auto sync on. And the device automatically uh, collector looks for the capability to sync and will update these features once it's in proximity and back online. Well, in addition to the sync improvements, sync errors now, now appear in the panel. And you turn these on by going to your profile, troubleshooting, and logging. In this example, I couldn't sync. I get an error automatically in my panel. I can select that error, view it right now. Oh, I'm out in the field. There was no host name. I could not find the portal. With AirDrop, I'm able to email this or I can text it to the admin so they can hopefully help me fix this issue. But don't worry, the, the updates are still on your phone. You haven't lost anything. This is just a um, way to help you with your syncing. And when you look at the map view, I also see that the sync has failed and that, that there was no portal connection. So a couple of ways of viewing that. So I've talked about a few things related to security, the ability to side load base maps, the ability to set within your features, who can edit one through the user, what through the user pro, uh, profiles, and using feature layer views. I do want to mention a few other things. If you don't know already, you, you're going to be very happy to hear that the key functionality of PKI support is now available in Android as it has been in iOS devices. And for those who are implementing enterprise mobile device management in your agencies, I recommend you going to our security site. We call it the ArcGIS Trust Center. We have a landing page for mobile product capabilities. And even attached in the GoToWebinar documents that you can download, the handouts, is this white paper on secure mobile implementation patterns. When you receive this PDF of these files, you'll have that link for the mobile device management. There's a webinar during our virtual dev summit just recently. So my colleagues had a whole hour webinar just on mobile device management with field apps. Definitely a lot of great resources for you as you move forward in that secure environment. Well, at the beginning, I talked about that integration of the different applications that you need to complete a full workflow. Let's look at these um, and break it down a little bit further. When you have Collector and you want to view the information immediately and investigate that information, make decisions, ArcGIS dashboard is easily connected. And you can just pull, I mean, pull the data straight into the ArcGIS dashboard. My example with Noah working in the field, they created a dashboard for the staff that were on land. But they didn't realize how useful that dashboard was going to be for the regional office and the headquarters observing their uh, coral reef um, investigations in the field. You can make assignments to your staff using Workforce and then connect to Collector to, create the, to collect the asset information, maps and forms, um, different ways of collecting data through Collector, Survey, or Quick Capture. And if you need help navigating to your site, maybe you are um, have your own road network, a park, a forest, utilities, and you can use ArcGIS Navigator offline to navigate to your assets. Custom application development is right on. A lot of people do that. You have your custom app, but you now realize that Collector can enhance those operations by helping you manage your data. We can co connect and integrate with custom applications. And how do we do that? We do that through um, universal app links, and we are, keep adding new capabilities. That's why I've decided to add this link here for um, how do you link and integrate applications, either they're um, RGS applications or custom applications. We've always been able to open up a map, or at least for a long time, open up a map and be able to center you. 
uh, uncertain location and latitude longitude. Now you can search and go to a specific asset, like with my benches, I can say which asset ID I want you to go to to collect information. And uh, returning to the calling app, if you have a, uh, your own custom app, you call collector. You want to go back to your custom app, that's, that's definitely there, as well as in iOS, updating attribute features, features uh, for um, existing features, I mean. And now my next example is I um, collector and opening up a quick capture form project. When you are out in the field collecting data uh, with the application, the collector application that we have been utilizing, there is an option, which I'm going to go back to and look, stop at, within the pop-ups. It says, quickly capture other issues. And you're like, well, why are you going to another application? Well, I have a specific asset management web map. But, you know, your field staff are the eyes on the ground. They may see other issues that need to be addressed. They may see things that they're, it's not in their purview or they don't have time to address and they want to report it. And they can just immediately add it into the Quick Capture app. And uh, when you are synced, then the Quick Capture app also updates its features. This is an example of a quick capture app. I'm reporting restrooms, a cleanliness, or I could be reporting that there's trash and I don't have the capability or the capacity to bring that trash back out of the park or the forest. So I wanna make sure that that's reported. A great example of connecting the two. What about when you wanna make assignments to your field staff? Let's use ArcGIS Workforce and then see how Collector can help you continue to maintain and manage your assets. On the left-hand side, I have my dashboard, or my dispatcher view, my project manager view, field ops manager, looking at my different assignments, the priority, when they're due, who's working, who is on break, and now I need to make a new assignment. I'm gonna go into the park near the marina, and I have observed and received reports of a bench that definitely needs to be painted. Right here in the dialog, I can click Create Assignment, and the assignment type is a selection that I've created with this project. In fact, I just added the COVID-19 social distancing signs in case I need to work on that. But in this case, it's bench man maintenance. The asset ID is automatically populated, assigning it to the closest worker, and it's a high priority due in, in a couple of days because the park is opening up and there might be an event. The ID can be entered here or brought in from another work order system, populated, linked. Remember, we have that integration it exists. And on the right-hand side is my workforce app that's already been opened up on my iPhone. My new assignment appears at the top. I received a beep when I, that, that I had a new assignment. I can look at the work order, any notes or attachments that project management added to the work order assignment. And now I need to let management know I've started this assignment. So I'm starting the assignment. And in the mobile app, I can select to connect to either help me navigate to the assignment, or in this case, let's just go ahead and start collecting and updating our asset information. For the benches, I have a related maintenance database. So I have the features layers and I have a database of all the maintenance. Here I'm signing, indicating which maintenance is occurring and by whom. But about that relationship, it's a one-to-many relationship. I have one bench and I have a lot of maintenance records occurring to it. So those relationships can be maintained and updated in Collector. Now that I have finished updating my information in Collector, I submit it and I'm going back to my Workforce app and indicate it's finished, it's removed from my to-do list on the, my mobile app, and on the left-hand side, the project manager gets an indicator, a visual indicator that it's completed and they can move on to the next task. 
Well, speaking of the next task, I've enjoyed talking to you about the offline workflows and starting editing. I think it's time for uh, our next poll question. Scott? The majority of you seem to be on ArcGIS Online. Thank you very much. We're going to switch it over to Thomas to help config, um, finish up the um, accuracy discussion and collector options. Thank you, Shamil. Well, that's good to know. Uh, it's uh, good to uh, realize once so we can uh, move forward with uh, that in mind. Like Charmel, I have also been tasked to capture and update features at Lake Akatink. And I'm excited to look at more of uh, the ArcGIS collector tools and functionality and also upcoming features. But first, uh, let's go ahead and look at configuring for high accuracy. So currently, the simplest way to create a feature layer or ArcGIS collector for ArcGIS collector is by using the create feature layer template within your content page in Portal or ArcGIS Online. The template lets you design your own feature layer or build upon existing templates. Most importantly, it lets you efficiently add receiver information fields and metadata to your layer, ensuring that you have the ability to quality check your data. So let's jump into our profile settings and, or excuse me, let's jump into uh, our portal and take a look at how this is done. So here I'm in my contents and I'm going to create a feature layer and it brings up the feature layer template. I can also create from an existing layer in my contents or organization, or bring in a, uh, another, a layer from another URL. I'm gonna stick with my templates, and I've got all of these different options to choose from. Quite a bit of options, and we have different fields of electro electric utilities, gas utilities, natural resources, water utilities as well. I'm gonna go ahead and select backflow inspection for this example. And hit create. Now what I want to really emphasize here is the create GPS receiver information. And why do we want to do that? Well, that's going to create these fields and metadata uh, within your feature layer so it can capture your GNSS or GPS information so you can back check that uh, for your accuracy. Getting back to our slides, you can see that uh, I've already collected some information here, and this is uh, the attribution that has been filled out from my GS GNSS receiver. You can see my receiver name. I was using averaging, so I have an average horizontal accuracy, an average uh, vertical accuracy, as well as a standard deviation. Let's go ahead and jump into our profile settings next to uh, to configure those for accuracy as well. Well, oh, oh hold on. Uh, first, we got to log in, right? And uh, thankfully, our developers at ArcGIS Collector have listened to you and have simplified the inter enterprise sign-in uh, by using a QR scan code. Now, this can be generated uh, by your GIS admin or field supervisor, but I can just quickly take a picture of that code generated. Using my face ID, I can use my username and password to uh, jump right in to either my curated map content or a specific map, as you see here. And these uh, codes can be generated uh, on several different websites. Uh, here we have an example of qrcodegenerator.com. Now that we've finally and easily 
uh, logged into ArcGIS Collector. Um, let's take some time to uh, look at our profile settings and ensure our accuracy. First, I'm gonna jump into accuracy where I can set my distance as well as if I'm in Imperial, uh, my inches or feet. And I'm gonna turn on 95% confidence as well. Now this is calculated by the root mean squared and is higher confidence level than the default 63 to 68% that's normally provided to you by a collector. I'll go into GPS averaging next and take, a, I'll use the GPS averaging to get five points, some people do 10, you can go as low as two, but it takes multiple GIS, GPS uh, readings and averages, averages the value to get more precise location accuracy. Next, SCAT uh, snapping is now available and comes default. Well, I'm sorry, let's go back. Before we go, before we go into snapping, we did offsets as well. And that's gonna be available with uh, EOS uh, Tools Pro, and we'll talk about that later. We'll go into our provider, and if we have a GNSS receiver, we can select that, add and select that as well to create more accuracy. And then further, we'll go into our download and sync. Uh, Shamel talked about this earlier, but we can add sync in intervals for 15, 30 minutes and an hour, as well as ensure that we only do it during Wi-Fi. So now we've got our accuracy uh, fields. We've uh, enabled all of our profile settings correctly. Now we can strap on our boots, get out the reflector vest, and go take uh, some and go do some collecting. Snapping is one of the newer features that I alluded to earlier. It comes on by default, and when you're snapping, it is now a more intuitive way of collecting or adding features to your map. You'll see here that uh, as I move around, I'll be able to see a specific type of visual sense. I'll get a circle around where I could snap to. And not only that, I'm getting a haptic feedback response from my device which makes it very intuitive. Now think if you're uh, collecting at a sewage treatment plant, all of the joints, all the valves that you have to collect to or connect to, this makes you rethink how you might be connecting and collecting uh, with collector now that we have snapping. When collecting in large areas, it can be difficult to navigate to uh, the next feature. Where here, I'm gonna go ahead and use my directional compass to help me guide to uh, the manhole that is that I'll be taking, uh, adding more attribution to here. I'll select the manhole and then go ahead and drill down through my form and find the directional compass. Now this compass will guide me to my next feature easily. And uh, just a side note, we want to make sure that we avoid any water hazards as we walk towards our next feature. Now, if you have a little bit further to go than a lakeside stroll, uh, you might want to use some turn-by-turn -turn directions. And Navigator is paired uh, with ArcGIS Collector. In this example, I can just put down a drop pin, ask for directions, select Navigator, and instantly I slide right into Navigator to get my turn-by-turn -turn directions. Very simple and very quick. I can also do this with any feature that's on my map as well. And speaking of finding your way, we have integrated with Collector, ArcGIS Tracker. 
ArcGIS Tracker is a lightweight uh, additional app that you can bring down from IO with iOS or Android. And using the promoted tool, uh, promoted layers tool, I can turn on my tracks and see where I've come from. I can also see where other field workers have been as well. Not only can I see where I've come from, but you can see the directionality of where you've been as well and where you've come from. Next, we're going to move into uh, move away from our tools and look at some of the new functionality of ArcGIS Collector. Now, Arcade is a lightweight scripting language used across the platform for things like pop-ups, labeling, as you see here, and field calculations, which you'll also see. Now, I'm, within the sewer line, I am going to update my inverts, my up invert, and then my down invert. And using Arcade and a geoprocessing tool, this is going to show within my labels and also calculate to my slope field my, the actual slope once it's submitted. So you see it in the labels here. And if I drill down back into my, my form, you'll see that the slope has also been calculated too. This provides customization for field uh, workflows. So field workers are instantly informed, which help influence their decisions. So let's look at how we can help these decision makers out in the field. So here I'm in ArcGIS Pro 2.5, and I want to make sure that I let you know that with this operation, we need to be connected to an enterprise database connection. I'm going to be using the add attribute rule tool. I'll set, uh, I'll set up my name for the slope or for the rule, uh, the description, the type of rule I can, I can, I'm going to create. Fill in my layer and field uh, names. Set the triggering events for the rule so it can be insert, update, delete. And then I'm going to come down and bring in my arcade expression. This is basically saying that we're going to subtract the up uh, invert from the down invert and then divide it by the length of the feature. Once I run that tool, I can bring up my attribute table and see if my tool has worked. Excellent, the calculation works. Now this calculation, it, this is not the only rule that we have to have in our feature. We can have multiple rules within this feature. Think if we have a pressurized uh, pipe throughout our network, we can look at, we could calculate the pressure within that pipe as well. Once I've got my rule created, I want to bring it up to the web. So I'll go ahead and share that and go to my portal. So here, I brought you here to uh, show you how we can create that, that labeling that we saw earlier within Collector. I'm gonna go into my manage labels and I'm gonna create an expression here. We have the option of all of our fields and also create an expression. So I'm going to edit this and add my expression, simply saying that I'm going to take the field, I'm going to multiply it by 100 and add a percent sign. Now this, uh, this operation and, and custom editing is very simple. We have all of our fields here that we can select. We have functions that we can add and call to and search for, as well as constants as well. Very simple. Now I'm going to test this. It's working fine. Hit OK. Excellent. All of our labels are now in our field exactly the way we want to see them. As well as Arcade, we can use Python to streamline our tasks as well. Python simplifies common workflows, adds GPS metadata fields, calculates orthometric heights. We can exclude web maps from collector, so it's not so jumbled and confusing when 
our field workers go in. We can deploy uh, using apps like we've seen with ArcGIS uh, Navigator. And with notebooks, as you see on the right here, you can build URLs uh, using the Esri API tool for Python to simplify your deployments. All of this can be found on our GitHub for collectors tool. Woo, let's do a quick recap here. Um, we've, we've gone through a lot. Uh, we've looked at offline workflows to collect without worry of having connections to your portal. We've quickly and easily uh, got into our projects using our QR code. We've ensured that we are getting quality data from our accuracy assurances. We've improved editing experiences here in Collector by, uh, by adding snapping, editing multiple features, and adding recent values for efficiencies in collecting. We have witnessed how Collector uh, easily connects to companion apps, making planning, routing, uh, routing and tracking easier. And arcade expressions have helped simplify our processes and workflows. Now I should add that uh, support for snapping, updating the forms for multiple assets and scanning QR codes is gonna be available in later releases of Android. So as we move forward, I it's worth mentioning that uh, as those developers who might be out there know that Collector works well with other apps, right? You, even your own apps or third-party apps like we see here from EOS, who are, who's a partner of Esri. EOS has created Locate for uh, ArcGIS Collector, which is considered the first high accuracy underground asset mapping solution. It can locate data for buried assets with a centimeter or centimeter uh, centimeter or submeter accuracy. EOS Tools Pro uh, allows us to connect to collector and do offsets using the LaserTech rangefinder. And let's move forward now and look at what's next. And what we have next, what's coming up next, is a web app that is a companion to ArcGIS Collector. Now this is gonna be deployed uh, as part of ArcGIS Online and Enterprise, and it's simply gonna launch from your app launcher like you would Workforce or Quick Capture, and you'll, be, you'll first be greeted by a curated list of all the maps that you're going to use. This is a streamlined process for creating those maps and getting your uh, projects moving forward. We'll go into the Redlands water, and as you can see, we have all the information of our maps, or of a map here in front of us. Note that we have some offline issues going on, so let's go ahead and uh, go into the offline uh, menu and see what's happening. We can't click offline, and the reason it seems to be is we have layers that aren't able to sync. Well, instead of having to go to each layer, go to the settings, and then drill down to enable these to link or to sync, we can do it directly from this web, the collector web app. As you can see, all of our layers are there that we can uh, ensure that they are the proper layers, the reference layers, the base maps. But now that we're able to sync our layers, we're now able to also go offline. From here as well, we can look at, uh, we can manage our uh, maps and define our map areas, as Samel mentioned and, and showed us earlier. Now we won't go through uh, doing the whole process over again since we've already seen it, but you'll have this ability here in the new web app. And finally, the ability to share directly from this app as well. If you've shared any type of map or application with ArcGIS Online or Enterprise Portal, it's the same process. So this web app will simplify your field deployments. It will give you abilities to health check to see if your uh, map can be taken offline. You can define uh, uh, your collection areas. And also you can ensure your map and contents are shared correctly. 
that's pretty exciting stuff to, to look forward to. Some more new things, smart forms. Anyone who's used Survey123 will know smart forms. Uh, this will also be uh, supported within this uh, within the uh, web application as well at a certain point. So within the smart forms, you'll be able to create required fields. So when you send workers out into the field, they're, you know they're going to get the information that is needed when they're out there. You also have conditional uh, visibility. So here, when we select apple tree, it gave us now what type of uh, what type of apple is it? What variety is it? And then it's asking us how much fruit it is too. And there'll be food, uh, field groupings, so like tree info and physical characteristics here, and new input types. With a smart form, you'll be able to carry out complex uh, collections with even more efficiency and less confusion. Also coming. Uh, also coming support for uh, ArcGIS Collector is vertical datum transformations, in orth which will give us orthometric heights. The ever popular and more and more popular indoor mapping and positioning will be supported, which will be a benefit for those planners and asset managers out there. Branch versioning support is coming, which will allow you to have that stopgap archive for your field edits before uh, or to ensure the correct uh, updates have been added before you push them up. And, and utility network support for ArcGIS Pro's new utility network extension. I want to thank you for joining us this afternoon and this morning, depending on where you are. There are several resources that are available to you in your GoToWebinar Heads Up. You'll find them in the handout section. Uh, so please feel free to download those materials. And for now, are there any questions? Thank you, uh, Charmel and Thomas. That was great. Um, so I also wanted to thank everybody shooting their questions over. There's been a, a lot of good questions, actually. Um, and just a quick FYI, if you asked a question in the chat, um, I tried to respond, if, and if I didn't get to you, I apologize. Uh, so feel free to shoot some more questions over as we kind of finish things out. Um, and I'll cover some some of the things that I think uh, could benefit multiple people. Um, so I'll give this one to you, Charmel. Uh, a user was asking how how um, or is it possible for a user to use a um, a user login on multiple de multiple devices at the same time? Oh, that, well, that, yeah, that is a very good question. Um, according to our uh, licensing agreement, one user account um, has one login. So I guess the answer is you have one, a login and it can only be used by one person. Great, thanks. Um, one other question, and, and maybe I'll chime in on this one. Uh, so folks are asking when would the snapping be available for the, the Android app? And, and I can actually tell you that that is very much on the top of the list for the Android app. So um, I would expect that functionality in the, the Android version of Collector for ArcGIS, or I'm sorry, ArcGIS Collector um, very shortly. Um, another question talking about kind of the next gen of Collector. So um, when will conditional visibility be available? Thomas, I know you just covered some of that. Do you know of when that will be available? I, I, I do not know for sure. Uh, new updates will be coming out in quarter three, um, but I think that's still a little bit farther down the line. Gotcha, great. Checking through some other questions that have come through. If if I can just also state that yeah. uh, there within the handouts you'll uh, you'll have several links to uh, different uh, blogs and um, and websites that will announce these new features that are coming and give you more and give you more information about when those dates actually will occur. Great. 
Um, and as far as what's coming, um, there is a section, and we can put the link out, of what's next. And so, um, you know, we're always pretty hesitant to give you an exact date. Uh, so um, until we, you know, it's right around the corner, but we do have a release coming out. I, I did see, uh, Andrew, another question that I could address as sure. far as handling the glare on your device. Now, of course, there's, you know, the glare on the device is going to occur, and the way that you can handle it as far as in terms of collector and creating the information that you are displaying in your web map is to take consideration of the icons that you use and the, um, if you have, have complex symbology or the colors that you utilize on your base maps. And that was what the experience that they found out is to minimize the amount of information and make the other um, assets and information that they're collecting a very high contrast colors. Great. Um, Thomas, this one's for you. How accurate can GNSS receivers uh, make measurements? Uh, it really depends on the receiver. Uh, there are a variety of different companies who create these receivers, and they create uh, several different stages of receivers uh, within the company, those companies themselves. So they can be uh, sub-meter for the most part or sub-centimeter as well. And uh, for anybody that's interested, we do have some great documentations that outline what receivers um, collector for ArcGIS plays well with. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us today. Hopefully you found this presentation useful and informative. I'd like to draw to your attention to our upcoming webinars for the rest of the year. We hope to see you at some of those in the future. And please remember to answer the survey questions as they help us improve our webinars. Have a great day.